Today we'll be doing this in After Effects. And that's it, I don't know why they cut back to me, so let's just get into it, okay? Cool. Okay, so for this effect, the actual beam coming out of the van, we are not gonna go over that because for the beam, we just used uh, visual effect assets from Triune Digital, which is the uh, Film Riot uh, website. Film Riot has a video where they explain how to make these type of beams in After Effects without using any plugins or bought assets. So I will put a link to that tutorial in the description below in case you don't wanna spend money. I don't like to spend money. I got this with a coupon. Now let's start the tutorial. So in our drone footage right here, which is available for download, link in the description, um, we can see that we have our lighting gear uh, visible at the beginning here that's emulating like a street light. So the first thing, we need to do is remove that, which is really easy because we filmed this film in four by three aspect ratio. So if we just take the clip and we slide it over somewhere around there, then we're good. If we play through, you don't see the equipment anymore and we're good. And when we have our shot in the right position, we're just going to right mouse click on the layer, hit pre-compose, and then pre-compose it, moving all attributes to new composition. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a 3D camera. Now this is a simple shot with nothing moving in the shot, so because of that, we can just use the nice track camera uh, tool in After Effects. We don't have to worry about going into Mocha Pro or uh, doing any planar tracks because it's simple enough. So if we go over to the track window, if that's not here, you can always go over to window and find it right here at tracker or just go to this little drop down menu over here and change it to motion tracking. So if we go to our tracker option over here and click track camera, make sure that our footage is selected. We click that and the software starts working. So while it works, we relax. And once that is done, you can see we have all these tracking points all over our footage. We can go over here to the effects control menu and where we have the 3D camera tracker, we just wanna click create camera. And uh, surprisingly, that'll create a camera, a 3D camera. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our beam. Now the beam was created in one composition and then just pre-comped and now we're bringing that pre-comp into this shot. And if we do that, we have this right here, just this black square. Now, first and foremost, let's change the blending mode of this layer to add. And that will get rid of the black. Now what we wanna do is, is um, for the first frame actually, with this shot, uh, in regards to uh, the short film that this is from, uh, the beam is already fully out of the van. So I'm gonna move the footage a little bit ahead of time. So it's right there. And now what we're going to do is we are going to adjust the position and rotation and scale of this beam to make it look like it's coming out of the van on the first frame of our composition. Uh, but before we do that, let's make sure that we go on the layer and where we see this little box here, uh, check in the square right below it on the layer of the beam. Check that in so now it is a 3D object and because it's a 3D object now, the 3D camera that we created will now read it as a 3D object. So you can see there how it is moving uh, with, the, with the drone. Before we go any further too, just for my sanity, I'm gonna change the beam layer to purple just so it's easier to see. So if we select the layer, hit R, we can see all of our rotation options. And then if we hit P, we can see our position options. And if we hit S, we can see all of our scale options. And with that, I'm going to adjust this sucker. Now, when we get in the position we want, you can see if I hit play, it doesn't move right. It's moving in the camera well, like it's tracked in there well, but it's not staying where we want it to stay. And that's because uh, the 3D camera, let's say it's right here. The van in 3D space is like right here, but the software is placing just by preset the beam uh, image like right over here. So. We need to get the beam image in 3D space of where the van is. And to better explain that, if we uh, go down, oh, why am I on my hand? If we go down here to the one view, we can see here, and we select two views. And so you can see in this other view, the camera is right here, and our beam is this purple square right here. And so what we need to do is in 3D space, push it further back over here as if it's further back in 3D space. How many times can I say 3D space in this explanation? So what we can do is with the, um, on the beam layer, if we hit P, the position, uh, you can see we have two position options for X and Y, but then we have the Z option. I'm from the USA, but I said Z anyway. 
Um, I'm dating a foreigner, so that's why. We have the Z option, and that's on zero, but if we bring it up, you can see it moves back. And you can see on our main screen, um, it's getting smaller. And that makes sense because we're moving further away from the camera. So let's go back to the one view, and let's just move it pretty far back. I don't know if there's an exact science to this, or if it's always just adjusting until it looks right. Cause that's what I do when I'm making 3D spaces. I'm just adjusting until it looks right. So I'm gonna just push it far back. And once we push it far back, it's gonna get smaller. So then we just need to scale it back up and you know adjust our position and rotation a little bit more. Okay, so I pushed it back about 7,000 pixels. And if we hit play now, you can see it looks a lot better. And as it goes through, we start to lose it a little bit, but that's fine. We can just keyframe the position and we'll do that right now. So if we select position, the P, not, not that, select the layer, hit P, uh, hit the stopwatch on our position on the first frame. And then let's go to the last frame and then just move it where it looks good, which is right there. And then if we play through now, you can see that the position of our beam stays very well. Now, what do we need to fix now? Well, we're getting clipping at the end here, right over here. So the beginning, we just need to adjust the scale more. So let's adjust that scale and then adjust the position again. And if we play through to the end, we can see, okay, we're good with the clipping. Now, once we have the beam done, what we want to do now is pre-compose the beam with the 3D camera, but we need the 3D camera still for this composition right here. So what we're going to do is select our 3D uh, camera, control D to duplicate, then take one of those and select it. And then also select our beam, right mouse click, hit pre-compose, and then type in name of whatever. I'm just gonna name it beam and then in parentheses track. Uh, move all attributes to new composition, yes. Hit okay. When you do that, you'll get the black square again, which means <clears throat> let's just change the blending mode back to add. The next thing that we're going to do with our shot is we are going to create a foreground mat of our van walls and door and the little antenna thing sticking out there. So uh, to, let me just point at it actually, uh, this door right here and this antenna and the wall, all that stuff need to be covering the beam. We're going to take our footage, control D to duplicate, then put it above the beam and then right mouse click on that footage and then go to Effect Boris FX Mocha, and then go to Mocha AE, and then make sure our quality is on full. Uh, I'm just going to save, just in case, and then we're going to hit Mocha to open it up. All right, so now that we're in Mocha, what we wanna do is we want to create a mask. So I'm going to create the first one around our little door right here. Uh, just zoom in, get our little spline tool, and then we're just going to create one around this door, this door. And then uh, with our pen tool right here or the X spline tool, we click and hold down and then go to the, uh, the one that's got an X and a plus. That's just going to add to the layer. And I want to uh, do another little mask right here of the um, window. And now we're just going to track that through the clip. So you track through and when it seems to be getting off a little bit, you can just go stop the clip and then adjust a little bit. If you haven't used Mocha AE, the beauty of it compared to using the tracking tools and After Effects is that when I adjust this one frame, it adjusts every frame before and after. Whereas in After Effects, it's just adjusting that one frame and no keyframes before or after are adjusted. Now, after we do this, you wanna go back through and create a new mask. So that one's good. We can just turn the gears off, turn the eyeball off, and then, um, and just lock it, honestly. Um, and then go to our x tool again and create a new mask. And what we wanna do uh, for this shot is we need to mask this roof and this little sidewall right here so we could you know, draw around here um, and do some kind of mask like this and uh, track that through. We also need to do this antenna right here. And we need to do uh, this second antenna that is shooting up through this window. We are going to do that. I'm gonna skip ahead when that is done though, right? 
now. Okay, so now I'm done with that. And you can see that the track and mask all look solid. So we are going to just simply control S to save, and then we're going to exit out of Mocha, and all that info will be saved and then brought back to After Effects automatically. And so if we go to the effects control over here, we can see the uh, Mocha option. Um, the drop down menu here for Matt, M A T T E, not M A T T. Um, we want to select apply mat and it's going to take the mass that we just made and apply it to our shot. So if we click that, uh, you can see that our shot now ba -ba -da -ba, applies the mat right there. So you can see with what we have right now, the foreground mat is working very well and it's really starting to make the beam look like it's in the physical world. Now, before we go on, I'm going to take that layer that we created the mat on and rename it just to uh, foreground mat. Now, next thing we're gonna do is we are going to fix these reflections and these cars back here because they're reflecting white from the light on set. However, they need to be reflecting purple from that massive uh, purple beam coming out of the van. So we're going to take our footage again, our base footage, the footage cropped, duplicate it, and then we are going to, in that duplicated uh, footage, go to the effects controls and delete the 3D camera tracker because we don't need that for this uh, clip. Um, and then we're going to right mouse click on our shot and then we're going to go to stylize and then threshold. And then on threshold, we're going to adjust the level until we just see enough of those reflections, those white little specks right there. So now we're gonna take this footage and before we do anything, we're going to rename it to reflections. And since this is applying to the beam, uh, I'm going to change the layer color to purple as well. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this layer and change the blending mode to screen to get rid of the blackness. And then we are going to apply a tint to our shot. So if we go to effect, color correction, tint. And then with that tint effect, we can change the whites to any color that we want, which we want a purplish color, which I happen to have the exact color I need uh, saved right here, which is FF0066. So if we copy and paste that into our little number color lookup right there, it comes up and we love it. Next thing we're gonna do is right mouse click on that reflection layer again, go to effect blur and then go to compound blur. And then we're going to move the amount of that blur to 80, just to soften up the uh, light a little bit. And now we're going to hit T on our layer to bring up the opacity option, bring the opacity down to 50, and then also alt click. So hold down the alt button and click the stopwatch on opacity and that's going to bring up our expressions menu. And then we're just going to type in wiggle and then parenthesis 25 comma five. And what that's going to do is it's going to adjust our opacity 25 times per second, um, just by 5% giving it a nice little flicker to our uh, reflections. So if we look at that, that looks pretty good, but there are still some minor adjustments we need to make. First of all, our reflections don't need to be blasting out purple in this area right here like it is right now. So we want to just create a mask that's just kind of going above the uh, top view right here. And we probably don't need to adjust the mask through the uh, shot, but let me just double check uh, the first frame if I hit M and then hit mask path. The uh, stopwatch is great keyframe. If I go through to the end, um, yeah, let's just uh, push it up right there and that should be fine. Let's see, uh, yep, that looks good. And so then we wanna feather that. We can feather it something crazy like 100. And then the last thing I wanna do is the purple wouldn't be as bright in this background right here as it is right here. And um, in other shots, we see that there's actually street lights over there as well. So what we can do is we can soften the purple up over there just by creating another mask. We just do a little like circle right there and then uh, hit M as well and hit the stopwatch tool on the mask path for the second, math, ugh, second mask that we just made. And then if we go through, um, adjust that mask to stay with those background cars and then feather that out again to something like 100 and then make the mask. You can see it's on add, change it to subtract. And now you can see it's white reflections in the background while purple uh, in the foreground right here. And the last thing that we're gonna do is add a classic JJ Abrams lens flare. So if we right mouse click, hit new, um, and then solid, make it black. Right mouse click, go to effect. We're going to use Video Copilot's 
Optical Flares, which is a bought plugin, but it's a very good bought plugin. If we go to options, the lens flare that we'll be using for this shot is part of the presets and the pro presets too. And it's like one of the first ones called Anthrax, which reminds me of a medicine that helps me go to the bathroom. Anyway, if we go to glow, we can adjust the glow color to a more purple glow, uh, something about like that, hit okay. And then take our flare layer and change it to add blending mode. We're gonna change the name of it as well to flare and change the color of it to purple. For this optical flare, we are going to place it right around there, bring the brightness down to something like 15 or 20 would be fine. So now we're just going to go frame by frame, adjusting the position. So hit the stopwatch for position X, Y and adjusting the brightness as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You don't have to watch that except for see the results, right? Yeah. And when we're done with that, we can see that we have the lens flare tracked in very nicely and you can see it has a nice little flicker until it completely disappears as the van wall blocks the whole light entirely. And now it's time for the last part of this tutorial, which is the best part in my opinion. Um, and that is adding distortion to our shot. So if we take our main footage right here and we right mouse click, go to effect, go to blur, and then go to vector blur, we can keep it at natural. And then if we go down to the vector map right here, it's on none, we can select the beam tracked option. And then if we adjust the amount of it, you can see if I just solo this layer, you can see we are blurring and distorting the image in reference to the beam which really gives us this nice like heat wave energy and really helps sell the final effect. And then if we unsole that, you can see uh, where it seems to be pulling at the edges of the van right there. We wanna take that uh, vector blur effect, uh, control C on it, and then go to our uh, foreground mat layer and control V to copy and paste that effect to the foreground as well so we're seeing it on where we masked out the door and everything and also you can see if i solo the layer that it is distorting the edges here a little bit so what you can do is you can scale up your shot just by like one percent or you can always just copy and paste the shot uh, of our footage and then below it scale that one up so that is the end of this effect, but I do have one little last minute tip for this shot. Let's say you want to render it out, but you don't want to render it all together. You want to have the, uh, the beam visual effect and the lens flare separate from the actual footage plate. So we'd render this shot out right here. And then just to render out the effect by itself, what we'll do is turn off that layer and then solo our beam and then solo our lens flare. So we have our beam and our lens flare right here and you can see it looks great. However, we need that foreground mat to block out our beam. So we can turn on the foreground mat as well and then right mouse click, go to effect, go to generate and then go to fill and it's gonna fill in all that mat right there to the color red and we just wanna change it to the color black, hit okay. And then if we play through, you can see we have the nice matte right there, but it's black. So when we bring this shot into Premiere, we just apply a screen blending mode to it and it looks great. So you can adjust the colors and whatnot on the uh, original clip without affecting this beam color right here as you're going through your editing process. So this is the official end to this uh, effect. There's no more bonus tips or anything. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you like, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you can stay up to date and not miss anything that we're dropping here at this channel. Happy New Year and uh, to all my Indonesian people, uh, Sampai Katamu. I believe that's goodbye. I could be wrong. I'm still learning. Anyway, bye. God bless. See you next episode. <laughs>